Kia ora and welcome to the last show in our current series of Just The Job. We've had a look at some fantastic careers this series and we'll certainly be back with a whole lot more when we return in the future. And wrapping up this series though, we've teamed up with Careers New Zealand to produce a special program about something we're all interested in. How to get ahead in our careers. Hello, I'm George Keenan. I'm a uni student at Massey University and I'm here to find out how to get ahead in the workplace. So, we've assembled a squad of career experts, including specialists in workplace psychology, employment law, communication and leadership, and professional careers advisor Sarah Moyne to give George the advice he needs to get ahead in any career. Hi again, George. How are you doing? Good, thank you. How are you, Sarah? Good. OK, today we're going to show you how to get ahead in the workplace. Once you've got your job, it's really important that you manage your own career, and there's two parts to that building your reputation and seizing opportunities. So let's go. Sweet. Your career journey starts from day one. From the moment you walk through the door, you can start to put roadblocks in front of your career, you can be an average employee, or you can start looking for opportunities to get ahead in your career. This company sells computers, but the same rules apply in any workplace. Hi, sir. Hi. That's Martin, the boss. And in this office, you'll see the good and the bad from his employees. Do you have a good night, Mike? Is it the same shirt? What's that stain? Mike, we had a meeting with your customer at 9am. Where were you? Building a good reputation is a great way to get ahead in the workplace. Now, Mike is building a reputation, but it's not the right kind. He's broken two basic rules, presentation and timekeeping. And these rules are unwritten, so even if no one says anything, it doesn't mean you got away with it. People will notice and it can do a lot of damage to your reputation. Think of your workmates like a team. Being reliable with timekeeping allows them to trust you with the goals that you're all trying to achieve. So a few pieces of advice. Be well rested for work, get a diary or use your phone calendar, and most importantly, let other people know if you can't make something. People will also judge your work ethic by the effort you put into your clothing. So those are two steps to building a healthy reputation in the workplace. And there's also certain things you need to keep in mind if you're feeling a bit unhealthy. <coughs> if you are sick, you shouldn't come into work and infect your colleagues, but there is something you should definitely avoid. Hey, where were you yesterday? Had the day off, went for a surf. It was great. Feeling better today, mate? Oh, yeah, yeah. Good thanks, just needed a rest. Whatever you do, don't choose your sick days as extra holidays. Sick leave is for when you really are ill. And that can be to your advantage, because a consistent and reliable presence in the workplace is a great benefit when it comes to managing your career. Think about it. If you're not there, you're more likely to miss out when great opportunities to get ahead come up. Oh, what was last night like? You're on form, brother. Hey, there's a 250 on trade me for 1200. I could take the afternoon off and go and get it. Take it for a blast in the weekend. Yeah. Mike's not working hard. He's hardly working. He spends a large percentage of his time doing stuff that's completely unrelated to work. And that's not just bad for his reputation. It's sort of like stealing from your boss who's paying you for your time. I thought you were going to be posting out the new flyers. No, yeah, I've done that. Um, I just saw that there was a mess here, so I thought I'd clean it up. Oh, nice one. That desk was driving us all crazy. Well done, mate. Good stuff. Believe it or not, it's small ways of showing initiative that can help build respect from your boss and build your reputation. So think outside your job description and never feel like a task is too small or beneath you. If you do the small things well, your boss will trust you with the larger tasks. If you slack on the small things, they'll assume you'll be slack with the larger things. One of the most important relationships in the workplace is how well you get on with your boss. So if you're open and honest when things are going well, it makes it easier to be open and honest when things go wrong. 
Jenny, come on in. I've made a bit of a stuff up. Oh. Uh. Uh, I've accepted a massive order which I shouldn't have because we don't have the, any stock in the entire country to fill it. Whichever way this ends for Jenny, what's important is that she's been open and honest with Martin and faced up to a mistake. And I've checked with Australia and they say they can air freight anything we don't have. She's also brought some possible solutions with her to the meeting. That's called being solutions focused and it's a great way to deal with problems. Okay, it's good that you've thought this through. Just give me one second there. So... Let's go for it. I'll help you get it done. Thank you. There you go. Good work. Most of the time, it's not the mistakes you make, it's how you deal with them. Making mistakes can actually mean that you're learning and progressing. How's it going, Kevin? I've got ten different things going on at once in ten different places. Where's my stapler? <sighs> Nobody's emailed me back. Why don't people respond to their emails? One of the things that's really important in today's workplace is that many people get tied up on the urgency of stuff and they get scared of a gun approach. They're doing all sorts of things. Sometimes you just need to sit down and get clarity. I know you feel you don't have enough time, but I find if you take a deep breath, it helps. You make a list and put your priorities in the list. The most important up the top, and the others can wait. Thanks. Because Jenny never hesitates to give motivation and support, she's seen as a leader, and building a reputation as a leader is a great way to get ahead. You don't have to be the life and soul of the party, but try and earn people's respect. Motivate others, step up to challenges rather than shy away from them. And if you can, try to be the leader rather than the follower. There has to be something I can do. I'm sorry you feel that way. Okay, bye. Kevin, was that another one? Look, maybe it's just that you're not that good on the phone. I mean, you're not that good in person either, but... It's best to avoid negativity if you can, because that can drag the whole workplace down, and it can damage your reputation. Kevin is completely out of his depth. Bless his little heart. He's trying, but cringe is kind of hard to watch sometimes. Backstabbing and gossiping never helped anybody's career. If someone's gossiping about you, just ignore it. People will know those poisonous personalities and their history for backstabbing. People make up their own minds about you. What we do isn't easy. Don't give up. And don't be afraid to ask for help. You can earn respect by being positive, not just with your boss, but with everybody. And that helps paint you as a leader. Now remember, Emotions are contagious, so whatever you put out there is what you're going to get back. And putting yourself in Kevin's shoes, Kevin should actually reach out for support if he's feeling out of his depth. I thought I was hired because they thought I was good at sales. And I feel like asking for help is like showing my hand, showing them that I'm not good at what they hired me to do. Kevin may feel like asking for help is a sign of weakness, but actually it's all part of being in a team. And he may not realise it yet, but he was actually hired for a range of qualities, including reliability and the fact that he could get on well with the others. Well, it's not hard to see why people like Mike and Sue are going to struggle to get ahead in their career. Luckily, there are others in the workplace who know how to step up. After the break, we're back at our computer company and it's office party time. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to Just The Job. We're going back to the computer office now where George and Sarah see how the office party can have an impact on your career, both good and bad. So you've seen a few tips on how to manage your career by building a great reputation. However, there is something that can destroy your reputation in minutes, the office party. The main thing to remember about office parties is that it's still work, and so work rules apply 
all sorts of issues which can and do come up often in the office party, normally as a result of people having a little bit too much alcohol. Things like people making um, inappropriate jokes. Ricked them, then they killed them. Getting into fights, either physical fights or verbal altercations. Everybody it's not else your office right stationery, it's my office stationery. I was here before you, so sorry, but... And also inappropriate sexual advances. And all of those things are not only not a good look for your career, but can also result in disciplinary action or even with a dismissal. But the office party can go both okay. ways. The office party is a great opportunity to get to know your colleagues better, so it's a great opportunity to um, talk with colleagues that maybe you don't know uh, very well, speak to your boss and get to know them a bit more personally. All those things can be great for your career, and it's also really good to build a rapport with people that you work with. So treat every work function with caution. It could push your career upwards or send it head over heels. <laughs> Building a good reputation is an essential part of getting ahead in the workplace, but so is seizing opportunities, like taking the chance to upskill whenever it's on offer. Training course has just been offered to us. I'll pay for anyone who wants to go on a one-day course on the future of computing. Anyone in? Sure. Yeah, great. Well, I'm not sure what I want to do yet. I plan to leave here soon and try something else, so it's really just a waste of my time. If you're serious about your career and you do want to get ahead, then taking any training opportunities that are offered to you is absolutely essential. I don't really have time to do that kind of thing. Ongoing training is so important. My advice is to make time for it. I did the training because Jenny did, and she's a legend. I reckon she'll be running this place one day. Now, Kevin's onto it. He's seen that Jenny could make a good mentor. It's really important to also learn informally from your workmates who you think can teach you new skills. Remember, learning is ongoing. When you stop taking chances to upskill, your career stops too. And a small reality check is that it doesn't take a week. It takes time and effort to get to the top. But opportunities to get ahead in your career don't always just drop into your lap. The team is contacting customers several times with the same information and not only is that a doubling up of work, it's also annoying our customers. Does anyone have any ideas on how we can stop this happening? Um, I write a bit of code in my spare time, so I created a program which can identify the emails and phone calls made to a customer from any computer or phone within our office. Uh, the program then links the phone calls and emails back to our main customer database so we can see who's, who's contacted the customer and when. <laughs> That's great, Kevin, you little beauty. So seizing opportunities isn't just about waiting for them to be offered to you. Kevin's taken a chance here to show the other skills that he's got, and that's one way of becoming a go-to person for help and advice. And that's when you know you're on the way up. The top tips for getting ahead in your career, I think first and foremost is your self-awareness. Being aware of what your strengths are, being aware of what you bring to any organisation. So the individual needs to be aware of what their strengths are and then align those to the vision and values of the organisation that, that they want to be a part of. Kevin, it's a big step up from where you are now, but there's a technical position becoming available in the National Marketing Department. Would you be interested? Hell yes. Yes. OK, I'll get things underway. Yeah, good move. Well done. A promotion is something you really need to think about seriously. I think most people would jump at the chance to take a step up the ladder and get paid more. But roles like that usually come with a lot more responsibility and accountability. And this means you need to think about how that fits with the rest of your life, with family and other commitments. You may fit for some, not for others. So what about Kevin? Do you think he's ready for the next step? I'm ready for more responsibility for sure. What he's offering me is what I'm passionate about, so I know I'll be good at it. And if you are ready for a promotion, then ask for it. In some cases, fight for it. It's really up to you to drive your career forward. If you do get a no, make sure that you ask them what you can do to improve your chances for next time. So you can see that by 
gradually building reputation and by seizing opportunities, planned and unplanned, you can really gain trust and respect from your boss and from your workmates, and it's the best chance you've got to get ahead in the workplace. Well, George is definitely going to have some excellent tools to use in his work life. But what about your work life? If you're stuck and you have no idea where to start when planning your career, head to the Careers New Zealand website and try out the interactive tools by going to careers.govt.nz. And when we come back, George finds out the difference communication skills and representing your employer positively can make in your career. Don't go away. You're watching Just The Job and in the last show of this series, we're learning some great tips that you can use to help yourself get ahead in your career. Next up, Dion Andrews, an expert in workplace psychology, reveals what's going on inside the heads of your boss and workmates so you can see how they tick and use it to your advantage. To get ahead in your career, good communication is essential. Now, communication is one of the biggest predictors of how you get on and how you perform at work. Now, everybody has different communication styles, and these styles are a reflection of our personalities. As a general rule, people's personality types fall into four main categories, and it pays to be aware of this when you're communicating. Hello, have you wanted a catch-up? Hey, um... Expressives are very interested in taking charge, but also enjoy working with people. They ask uh, who questions. They're interested in who's involved, and they're interested in expressing themselves and bringing people along with them. So, um, about your new man. He's nice. Oh, he's an engineer. The analytical is very much interested in the facts and the figures. They like to dot the I's and cross the T's. They're very much focused on yes, activity. Um, I need some more details on that advertising plan. Um, is it 18 or 19 days? Because we... The driver is formal and direct. They like action. They like to be in charge, and they'll tell you exactly what's expected of you. They're the type of people who will focus on getting things done. You'd have to get moving now, please, Mike. Okay. The amiable is very relaxed, very informal. Um, they're all about relationships. Um, they like to uh, receive acceptance. That's their key driver. Mm, yeah. Whatever you think I agree with you. The best piece of advice that I can give you is to tailor your communication style to suit your audience. Work out what the style of your audience is and then use the right words to, to match their needs. Shall I put 19 days just to be sure? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's complex. Human relationships are the most complex things on earth. And we keep learning about relationships throughout our entire life. This means knowing yourself too, knowing how you come across, how you react in different situations, even if you can't put a label on it. If you're interested in self-insight, then go to www.memyselfi.co.nz and have a look there. Many industries require employees to work away from the office. Hello, are you Angela? Yes. I'm Cindy. But whether you're a community nurse, builder, furniture remover or vet, the rules of the workplace still apply. And there are some serious pitfalls to be aware of. Yeah, what? No, I'm not happy to be here. I have to drive all the way up. God knows where. Yeah, I am upset about it. You've added like another 45 minutes onto my day. But I was supposed Hi. to finish like an hour. I told you an hour before. Are you the new painter? Yeah. So the painter showed up, he was late, nowhere, right? he was dirty, yeah. he hadn't had a shave, he was swearing on his phone, complaining about having to come here to do a job that was too far away for him. Clearly didn't want to do the job. When he walked in, his boots were filthy, he didn't take them off, he didn't even bother wiping his shoes, and he walked mud and grease all up my hallway. As soon as he started the job, he lit up a cigarette and was smoking in the house. I really don't like smoking. I've got two kids with asthma. Really, really, really poor. He didn't even ask to use the toilet. Um, he left the seat up and made a mess all on the floor. Bye. He was a walking, talking, bad advertisement for the company he was working for. He was hopeless, disrespectful and rude, and I'll never use him again. 
Repeat business is a key part of any business. So we asked Simon Collins, the owner of Collins Plumbing, what he expects of his guys when they're out on the road. It's most important for when the guys are on site that they're representing the company in a good way um, because it is my company and we need further work from those customers. Hi, I'm Tony from Collins Plumbing. Come to oh, look at you. Hey, colleague. So what does Simon specifically want his guys to do when they're representing him out in the field? It's basically keeping a clean va van, a clean image. You don't want a guy turning up that's covered in silicone or glue. Second of all is um, punctuality. Arriving on time is another key aspect. As soon as you've finished the job, it's most important to find the customer and basically tell them what you've done on the job and how you've repaired it. Ten years at least, hopefully. Very long time. A lot of my work is repeat business. I need my guys to be building good relationships with my customers. Simon makes sure his customers get great service by offering ongoing training to his employees. So, the rule of progressing your career by jumping at the chance to take any training on offer applies here too. That's the principle of a closed-loop solar system. Training is extremely important for the guys. Um, it basically keeps their mind ticking over and learning new, new products and new things. Um, for them to show initiative and to learn more um, also tells me that they're a good staff member and they're wanting to learn more things and get involved with the company. Um, if they're doing that, there's all sorts of benefits that come from that and moving up the chain and within the company. So to get ahead in your career, build your reputation by good presentation and timekeeping, being positive, giving motivation and support, and remember that you represent your employer whether you're in or out of the office. Seize opportunities to develop your career by taking initiative, knowing the objectives of the company you work for, and jump at the chance to take any training on offer. Well, it doesn't really matter what career you find yourself in, the tools we've shown you today can be applied to any work situation. And if you try some of these in your job, you'll be giving yourself every chance to succeed. Now, we've really enjoyed bringing you a whole bunch of different careers to check out this series, but make sure you keep an eye out for us when we're back on screen with Series 8. In the meantime, you can find out all about the careers we've shown you throughout this time on our program website at tvnz.co.nz slash just the job. So best of luck, and I'll see you again next time. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.